Halo has been part of my life for almost 20 years. It was the first rated M game I ever played. I would sneak off to my friend Mitch's house to go play it. Do you think I liked going to Mitch's house? Mitch was an idiot. Ugh. But he was the only kid on the block with an Xbox. Once I got into high school, me and my buddies would go to the computer lab during lunch and go play Halo Combat Evolved over LAN. And no, it wasn't because we didn't have a table to sit at the most part, we also really liked the game. Eventually Halo 3 came out and it was my first online multiplayer experience. And it actually started to make me think about how to become a better player. Me and my buddy Scott were absolute kings at CTF on Sand Trap, capping flags left and right using the Mongoose. When the Master Chief Collection finally was announced, I was super pumped because I'm a huge Halo Reach fan and I was so stoked to play Halo on PC once again. And then one day, the Halo Infinite trailer dropped. And just like the trailer, my heart also... Wait, no, this is the Buzz Lightyear trailer. My heart also dropped. We then got an early release of the Halo Infinite multiplayer on November 15th. We're in. The 20th anniversary of Halo. Aww. Which, by the way, came out alongside Battlefield 2042's launch, which I'm not sure if you heard, but basically set itself on fire upon arrival. And that's what I'm here to talk about today. Not Battlefield, Halo. And I'm painfully aware that the game just released fully and everybody is probably wanting to talk about the campaign. And if you want to go hear about the campaign, I recommend somebody like SkillUp's video on it, which is great. But today we're going to be talking about Halo Infinite's multiplayer. And this game, unlike most games that are launched in 2021, actually work at launch. And overall, I love it. Halo on PC just feels so damn good. Halo is an OG competitive shooter that heavily relies on your reflexes, and to be the best, you really gotta flex them. Because it's been a while since I've actually played Halo in a competitive setting. It's funny to come back to like dealing with shields and stuff like that, which I find so interesting. Because I usually love quicker TTKs. And that's time to kill for gamers that aren't hardcore like Dude, uh, I'm me and this guy over here. I'm not a big fan of armor or shields in most shooters. But Halo's shield system is not only classic. Classic. But it also gives you enough breathing room in combat to think through how to win a fight every time you get into an entanglement. Like right off the bat, I actually used melee again. I forgot how satisfying melee combat can be, or demoralizing. <sighs> I've grown really used to games like Call of Duty and Battlefield, where it's just snap and shoot. You don't really ever use melee combat unless you're like up close and personal and trying to humiliate somebody. Speaking of being humiliated, the tea bag is back, baby. I never thought that getting this dunked on would feel so heartwarming and nostalgic. Now, I think there's a lot of things to talk about in Halo Infinite's multiplayer, but first of all, I think we gotta cover the guns. The guns in the game are absolutely fantastic. You have your staples like the assault rifle, fully automatic, and with an updated sound. And let me say that the sound design in this game overall is absolutely killer. And I know that the game devs put a lot of work into it because Halo's Instagram was like 90% sound design creation posts for the past year and a half, which I guess some people might find interesting, but Hey, they did a good job. The new pistol is dope, and I love using the combination of the assault rifle and the pistol together for the old AR to pistol quick draw and get a headshot move. The rocket launcher is back, and if you get your hands on it, it's pretty much an automatic four kills or an instant suicide. The needler is back. Classic. The plasma rifle. I actually don't know what happened here. This thing is garbage. This gun is terrible, but I'm gonna show you how bad it is. Just, I gotta jump on this guy. Like, when am I supposed to use this? It's the worst gun ever invented. The sniper rifle is, of course, in mm -hmm. the game, and when it's in my hands, man, everyone's dead. Most of the time. The gravity hammer, I think, got an upgrade. This thing sounds great and feels great. And the sword kind of got a downgrade. Like, you don't have that classic whipping out the sword noise anymore. This gun? I f*** with this gun. Heatwave is one of my personal favorite guns. It can be a little tricky, but I personally think it's a pretty effective gun. And it sounds sick. 
Then you have the Cinder Shot, which is an incredibly versatile grenade launcher. It's pretty surprising how effective it is in close quarters combat, and at the same time you can snipe somebody with it using its aim feature. Combined with the melee, the shotguns are deadly. And I'm actually surprised at how many people say it's a pretty ineffective gun, but I actually love the sweet spot of the shotgun and it seems to be working for me. Oh my. The Sentinel Beam is basically using Zarya's gun on full power. This thing is pretty much the rocket launcher, just less. And if you were as confused as I was, the shock rifle is technically a sniper, but it also has the Orc Shaman chain lightning effect to it. Of course, Halo's combat wouldn't be the same without its grenades. <laughs> which you spawn with two every single life, and that makes things very hectic and fun. Halo's grenades are also one of the few FPSs I actually get consistent grenade kills with, because its bounce is so predictable and its blast radius is calculatable. Its blast radius is calculatable. Jesus. Basically, no math, grenade do good. And nothing is more satisfying than getting a sticky grenade kill. Now let's talk about that armor. Put this back here. Halo Spartans are some of the coolest signature super soldiers in gaming. I look like Optimus Prime. And that has a lot to do with their sexy ass armor, which you are not gonna get a lot of for quite a while, but more on that later. The first thing you might notice when you're customizing your character in Halo Infinite is that your soldier has these things called armor cores now, which basically separates certain armor parts to only working on some cores. I'll give you an example. Let's say I unlock a blue visor color for this core. That means I can only apply it to this core, I can't apply it to this core that looks virtually the same. I have to unlock it separately. Why did they do this? I'm serious, why did they do this? I, I have no, this is such a bad idea. Why aren't all the armor parts put into the same core? And then you can also have the option to switch out the core itself. I don't really notice any big changes between each core and it would give us a bunch of more creative options. I have a theory. <laughs> and it's just a game theory, that this change was made so you probably have to buy more cosmetics. So let's say you unlock that blue visor for this armor core, now you have to unlock it for this core, that core, two, three, ten, I don't know how many armor cores they're gonna add into the game, but this is kinda seems like a slimy move to me. Now let's jump into the game itself and let's talk about those game modes, baby. First of all, why, 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 why? Why, why, why are we not allowed to choose our game modes? What the? So Slayer is back, of course, their elimination game mode, which is just team deathmatch, but when you have voice actors like this, Grim Reaper, and your Halo, you call it something badass like Slayer. Pancake! Oddball is back, which is basically your objective is to hold your balls as long as you can. And now that I think about it, there's actually a lot of ball talk in Oddball. Ball is coming. Ball drop. We have the ball. Ball drop. Enemy has the ball. ball drop. We have I don't ball. like this ball being in this corner this whole time. Enemy Let those ball. balls out. We have the ball. Ball drop. Keep a tight grip on that. I like Capture the Flag. Like I said, I'm a veteran of it. But it always kind of bugs me when I see a mechanic of the game being blatantly exploited for an advantage. And what I'm talking about there is people running with the flag and throwing it in front of them, picking it back up, throwing it in front of them, picking it back up to move faster. I think there should be a better, less clunky way to move with a flag. Big Team Battle is back, of course, and it has all the game modes, and it's as hectic as ever. I would like to see more maps in there. And then there's Fiesta game modes, which seem to be temporary, but I gotta play a lot of them, and they're actually my favorite game modes, especially because you spawn with randomized weapons, and it allows you to try out the entire Halo arsenal of new weapons and vehicles. All the maps throughout Halo Infinite are meticulously designed for fair play and balance, and I personally think they nailed it. Fair play and balance. Yeah. Now let's talk about progression in Halo Infinite. Oh boy. If this video were a jacuzzi, this is the part where you're at your knees and your <laughs> balls are about to touch the water. Now, Halo Infinite multiplayer is free to play, which makes me go, oh, do we want that? Think about this. For those who play free, yes, Enjoy the game. I'm glad everybody can join in. Sometimes it's hard to shovel out $60 for every AAA game. But if you do play absolutely free and don't buy a battle pass every season, enjoy virtually zero unlocks for your entire playtime. In Halo Infinite, you have their battle pass, which of course it has one because every fucking game on the fucking planet has a battle pass now. In the past, you have the free unlocks and then you have the paid battle pass unlocks as you level up. While doing research for this video, I actually found a guy who perfectly explained some of the critical issues in the progression system. His name is Critical Nobody, hence the crit 
you get the point. If you do not buy the Battle Pass, you get basically nothing for your time investment. Free players only unlock 27 of the 166 items available. And if you only count armor customization people actually care about, that number shrinks to 18. Is anyone else sick of these completely meaningless rarities assigned to everything now? You see this green color scheme? Ugh, that's, that's some low tier common peasant green, am I right? But this, this is some Fine aged legendary green right here. It's my belief that- All right, thanks Critical Nobody. Still my video. You might be a person who's pretty gun ho on not paying a cent for free to play games, which I respect, but I doubt that zero reward for time spent in the game will keep you around for very long. To put it simply, Halo's progression system takes forever. I've put 30 hours into the game and I'm level 16. And there's a couple of reasons why. Number one being, there's no base XP per match for some reason. All XP you gain is through completing challenges solely. And I should say that I'm not hounding after these challenges. I'm playing the game as I naturally would and occasionally I see a challenge that seems easy to hit and I'll do it. Also the XP required to level up remains the same as you level up. So I've been leveling up pretty much every two hours. So if I put in 200 hours, I'll be level 100 by the end of the season. The odds of me having time for that are pretty good, but you know, I play other games. How are they reasonably expecting me to reach the end of this battle pass? Well, today it is me. We all shall fall. There it is. <laughs> you can purchase levels. You can buy levels all the way up to the max level for $2 a pop. In total, $200. Well, $210 because you bought the Battle Pass to begin with. And guess what? People are gonna do that. This feature specifically should 100% be removed. It won't, but it should. This completely devalues all high level cosmetics. No longer is the person with the Emil skin actually a hey, high value target or somebody that impresses me. This guy's gonna be the best game player. Never mind. It just means that the person is financially crazy. Now I gotta cover the store and I don't want to, but I have to. I can already see the Halo Infinite store getting out of control because it already has. There was a deal today I saw for a keychain, a visor color, and a new stance pose at the end of a game. Special delivery, got a keychain, visor I basically already have, and into the breach, new standing pose. It's gonna be uh, 1,000 coins, which is $10. All right. It's gotta be the stupidest thing I've ever heard of. I see they've chosen the Valorant approach of ridiculously priced cosmetics. It doesn't make financial sense at all whatsoever for you to buy a knife in this game that is $40, so don't buy them. Even though I have. But I, I, won't, I bought the pack, I had a bundle deal. Even Disneyland didn't rip me off this much with a physical keychain. This thing was $5. I mean, I stole it, but... And here's my problem with most cosmetics you can buy in games today. Immersion breakage. Immersion breakage is already seeping into this game. Why do games do this? Why does Call of Duty Modern Warfare, a game with its time frame literally in the title, why can I shoot laser bullets with holographic guns while wearing a demon skin? Halo definitely has more flexibility there being a sci-fi game, but come on, it's a future military shooter. There's no blood in the game and now I can put some flowers on my helmet. Like, God, 2021. Why are we such pussies? And if you were to say, what, there is blood in this game. No, that misty Darth Maul blood does not count. This is Halo, which is now rated T for teen. When the hell did that happen? Halo is for gaming vets that will do whatever they can to have a successful LAN party. I don't know what that has to do with age, but it just, it means we're adults. I'll end my money rant with this. AAA Studios, 343, figure it out out. I'm not the biggest fan of Battle Pass systems. Call me crazy, but I'd rather pay $60 for a full finished game. <laughs> but there is ways to incorporate fair cosmetic microtransactions and a fair Battle Pass progression system without blatantly trying to milk your audience dry of money. So now that we've got that out of the way and our metaphorical genitals have dipped into the water, it's time that we enjoy the fantastic experience of Halo Infinite. Halo Infinite's gameplay is just good, man. It has great innovations to the Halo IP without changing the entire game's framework. The game just feels like Halo. The game brings back so much nostalgia from its guns to the voiceover, to even the awards that you're given, like Death from the Grave. Back from the dead, asshole! 
And if you're coming from older titles like Halo 3, 2, even Combat Evolved, I think you'll actually really like it. The combat keeps you constantly moving and trying to predict your enemy's movements. The new weapon additions feel right at home, even though your number one killer will still probably be your fist. The new vehicle upgrades seem appropriate. This game is also going to make you rage like you used to, <laughs> which I kind of look back on with some fun. I want to put a f***ing hole through this monitor, man. Whew. It's kind of a fun game. Man, dude, my heart's pumping. As in, I'm f***ing angry as f***. You, hey, you. Damn it! You're gonna die a lot but it's gonna be fair. Losing a fight to somebody with a broken shield is brutal. Missing shots with low ammo guns like the skewer is gonna bite at your How soul. And you're definitely gonna run into situations where you and your enemy kill each other at the same time, which causes an inner conflict of you winning and losing at the same time. But that's okay, it's good. Because without the rain, you would never feel thankful for the warmth of the sun. Anyway. I do want to bring up some quick qualms, and uh, I'll call this section the Jack Say Their Quick Bitch list. He's a little bitch. What? That's not what I wrote. If we're still in the jacuzzi, this is the part where we're all in it, and somebody just peed. Ew, that's gross. Sir, sir. But it's so warm anyway that you just kind of deal with it. Lag is surprisingly prevalent, and that's kind of a big issue for a game based on precision shooting, geometry, and mathematics. I run into audio desync issues all the time. There's still a couple of smaller bugs that I run into, like when my guy spawns, his gun doesn't show. And to finish off the bitch list, I definitely gotta mention the load times. There's loading times everywhere, from starting the game, to going between menus, which there are too many of, to loading into the game itself. That needs to be definitely tightened up. There we go, I switched my character. Why is this customized menu not in this menu? Why is it not here? Why does it disappear? But I do believe that these problems that I just named will be quickly ironed out with some well done optimization. Halo is back and I'm glad that it is and where it is. I might sound like I'm complaining a lot, but I'm mainly pointing things out to protect the core, not the armor cores, those things can leave, the core of what makes Halo so great. Fun, fair, satisfying combat that keeps you on your toes, punchy sound effects, imaginative and fitting sci-fi designs like weapons and vehicles, competitive gameplay, good and sometimes crazy physics, thoughtfully made versatile maps, large and small, and the game just being a great way to test your gaming reflexes. It tests your skill. It tests your temper. Those Halo moments that I got to experience as a kid at Mitch's house, in the computer lab, or playing with Scott, I got to experience once again and I feel right at home while playing Halo Infinite. That's the end of the Halo section of this video, and if that's what you came for, you're welcome to leave, but uh, I do want to talk about what just happened in my last video, which I don't know what happened. <laughs> But I got over a million views and a shitload more of subscribers. Um, my average before that video was 200 views per video and I only had 330 subscribers. So it's overwhelming to say the least. <laughs> it really is. And it's an amazing thing. It's crazy to see something that you put just hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of work into start to pay off. And I'm incredibly grateful for everybody that's watching. Okay. Go. Go. Go it. Read some books. And thank you. Wait, what? When did I? Oh, fuck.